England. We're at the Royal London Theatre for a much anticipated main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight. Each man comes into this fight support. Scheduled to go the full ten if we get that far. Round one underway. Good looking two punch combination there. Great movement to get away from those punches. One of the fastest punches in the game. You see how he just turns over that hook? Off the mark there. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Targeting that midsection now with the combo. Turns over that hook upstairs. Throughout your training career, what did you consistently feel more comfortable with? Training the shorter guy against the taller guy or the taller guy against the shorter guy? Well, you can't teach tall. You know what? That's there or not. I love to have those kind of advantages physically. You just have to make sure that you teach them to fight tall. Blocks that punch. but he sends it right back. Keeping his hands up and getting rid of his opponent's offense. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Good, solid right hand he lands there. What do you look for here out of the referee? What should he be looking for so that he knows, hey, listen, it's time to stop this fight. The cut has gotten so bad. Well, first of all, he's looking where the cut, where the blood is flowing from. It's above the eyes, so it's going down. It's impairing the vision. So that's going to get the referee's attention, and he's going to eventually bring the doctor up into the corner. This round comes to an end. A round in which this fighter threw a lot of punches, didn't land a lot of punches. I'll tell you, what advice can you give to him if you're the trainer? Well, first of all, deal with the psychological part. Joe, don't forget, 75% of this game is psychological. Don't let him get discouraged because even though he's not going to say nothing, in his head he's starting to get discouraged. Just say to him, hey, listen, you're going to catch him. Let's shorten him up a little bit. And you know what? He's moving his head, so go to the body. Because now you're going to hit him a little with the body because the body's not moving. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. Overhand right after blocking that away. He clearly came in with a strategy here tonight, Teddy, and so many times it's, hey, I'm going to bang that drum. Yeah, he is banging that drum. That drum happens to be the body, and he figures that he's going to try to move on him, so start doing it early on, and later on he's going to have a guy in front of him. The combo lands upstairs. Now there's the jab. Teddy, among the things that we should be looking for early is which fighter can show a wide array of an offense. Yeah, you don't want to always be coming in that front door all the time. You want to come in the side door every once in a while, you know. Sometimes you want to maybe even come through the roof, down the chimney. You want to mix it up. the top very nice work to the head the right hand landed and that's the end of round two well we've seen this before a fighter with a bad cut and sometimes a fighter that now has a much greater sense of urgency yeah right now if he was gambling if he was in a casino he's rolling the dice he's hoping to come up with seven Swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. He snaps a jab. 
not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Scored well with the hook after blocking that shot. Well, he's got the attitude, something's got to stick. He fires off the combination, and they both do. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. And he just turns that hook up top, and it does damage. Well played, straight right hand. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Good exchange, he fires back. to put his punches together. That's a nice looking combo. Well, that's the benefit of two and three instead of one. Well, Teddy, you can see quite clearly that that cut is becoming a major problem for him. What does he have to do strategically here to deal with it? Well, there's three lines of defense, Joe, whether you cut or you're not cut. One is use your legs. Get out of range a little bit. The others move your head. The others block. He has to pick one of those defensive strategies, one of those choices, and put it into place. Well, something's got to stick. He sends the combination to the body. Well, if anything has been learned from the first three rounds is that sometimes just being the busier fighter will do well for you. And that's the case right now for him as he's up two rounds to one on Teddy's scorecard. Yeah, not always landing a lot. You put it very well, Joe. Not always landing a lot. But keeping his opponent defensive and keeping him from doing what he wants to do. Well, he's picking up right where he left off. Remember how he finished that last round? Yeah, he really finished strong, really fast. And you know what? This is a thinking man's fight. I know a lot of people are going to say Teddy's just an aggressive fighter. No, he understands and his corner understands that his opponent only had 60 seconds to recover, and they're jumping on him, figuring that their opponent hasn't recovered. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. He scores with the left. Accurate shot, straight right hand comes in. Missed targeted. That right hand over the top lands flush. Here's a moment here as you see the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science, not just some raw savagery swinging out there. Look at the little subtleties here, Joe. What he does is he forces them into a position to stop the punch. And then when he stops, steps back, makes a miss, and comes right back. Well, his opponent got away from that uppercut. And there he is, scoring with the right hand. End of the round here, as we're ringside at our fight night venue. Of course, we're on the road with you every step of the way with a fine crew. we got to give credit to the crew there, Robbie and Rick back in the production truck, doing a nice job all cramped up in a tractor trailer. Yeah, they do a great job. They allow us to go on the air and uh, allow us to do the fun part while they're doing the grunt work. They're doing all the difficult things back there. Of course, Mike, Brian, all those guys. We appreciate you very much, and um, we're not taking you out for dinner tonight. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. Scored well up top. Way to hit the target there. Jab uppercut. Off the mark. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Nice work, great technique, the combo lands. How is he taking these?